Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and today we're going to be talking about building a gaming PC for 75,000 rupees. Yes, we have already a video of building a gaming PC for 50,000 rupees and one for 70,000 rupees. We're going to link to those videos in the, in, in the descriptor below so you can go check those out if that's your budget. But we got a lot of requests to build a gaming PC for 75,000 rupees so we are answering your demands and getting you this video. These are the components that we think are ideal if you have a budget of 75,000 rupees and are looking to build a gaming PC. Intel Core i5-6400 Nobody needs an i7 for gaming and getting an unlock processor should be kept for later if you have the budget for it. The Intel Core i5-6400 hits the right balance between price and performance. Moreover, these new generation CPUs are much more power efficient than all previous generations. ASRock H170A X1 Since you aren't getting an unlock processor, it's best to settle for an H170 based motherboard. The ASRock H170A X1 is economical and provides two PCIe slots, one for your graphics card and another for an expansion card, if at all you do use one. G-Skill Ripjaw 4 The motherboard we pick supports RAM modules running at 2133 MHz, so we went with an 8 GB kit. Almost all RAM manufacturers provide 10-year warranty on their mid-range products, so it doesn't matter which top-tier manufacturer you go with. We picked G-Skill for our build. The kit consists of two 4GB modules, which leaves room for two more modules should the need arise in the future. Seagate Barracuda 1TB Just like the RAM, every hard drive manufacturer offers two-year warranty period, so you can go with whichever unit is the cheapest for you. Since we are including an SSD with this build, it doesn't matter much if you go with a low-power hard disk drive with poor seek time. The hard drive is primarily for installing software and storing files which aren't going to be used frequently. Kingston UV300 The Kingston UV300 is one of the cheapest SSDs that you can get which offers decent performance. Powered by Fisson's S10 controller, the UV300 offers 500 MB per second read speed and 350 MB per second write speed. It may seem to be slower than other SSDs, but for 3000 rupees, you can't get a better deal. Zotac GTX 960 The much debated component of the entire configuration is the graphics card. And for good reason. Your objective is to save as much money as you can from all the other components and use that to get the best possible SKU. If we are to consider all the optional components, then getting a GTX 970 becomes a pipe dream. So you start off the configuration with a GTX 960 and if you've managed to save up some cash on some of the components, move up to an AMD R9 380 and if you can save up even more, then get the GTX 970. Antec VP650P V2 The configuration we've listed out needs around 450 watts, so your PSU has to handle that, but it's always best to leave a little headroom, especially if you're going to be running it at full load for extended gaming sessions or if you plan to keep it powered on 24-7. So we've decided on a 650 watt power supply, specifically the Antec VP650P V2. The V2 is an improvement over the previous series by virtue of its support for low power states, which debut with Haswell. FND W330X Wireless Optional We've been enchanted with the FND F680 ever since we've had the privilege of testing them. And while this unit doesn't stand up to be the F680, it does come close and that's the only reason we've picked this. However, this is optional and if you want to save a little money and get a better graphics card, you can skip the speaker option. LG GH24 NSD1 Again, optional. The age of optical drive is coming to an end. We've personally stopped using DVDs for quite some time and that makes this yet another optional component to the configuration. But we aren't judging, so if at all you do need an optical drive, the LG GH24 NSD1 is one to buy. Cooler Master Storm Devastator The keyboard and mouse are integral to a PC gamer's repertoire and it's best if you stick to whatever you happen to be using at the moment. But if you do need a change, then the Cooler Master Storm Devastator is a pretty good bet. The keyboard features membrane keys, but they're a lot more durable and the backlit definitely helps with late night gaming sessions. And the mouse has three DPI levels. Together, they make for an economical gaming combo with features that you'd be hard pressed to get for the price. BenQ RL2240HE one of the main reasons for picking an RL series from BenQ is for its smart scaling features. Moreover, with a 1ms grey-to-grey response time, you hardly experience any ghosting which makes it ideal for fast-paced gaming genres like FPS and RTS. And if it's good for FPS, it's good for every genre. Antec X1T Gaming 
We've picked the Antec X1T gaming cabinet because it supports ATX boards, has a groovy LED illumination setup and looks the part. You need to decide if you want your machine to exude the spirit of the PC gaming master race or look like an inconspicuous trash can. The Antec X1T sits somewhere between the two. Well, there you have it. That was the components list we think makes for the perfect build PC for gaming for 75,000 rupees. As always in the comment section below, you can let us know what you thought of our components list. If you think it should have been different, you can let us know the components you think deserve to be on this list. You can also tell us about the components you have used to build your gaming PC. And as always, if you like this video, hit the like button and you can subscribe to the Digit YouTube channel for more videos like this one. We'll catch you in another video.